this week, Twisted Isles Motorcycle Museum with Jerry Ottaway, and then some other dude they call Kiwi, Mike Thomas. Somebody that just dropped in. Yeah. Jerry, you was uh, nice enough yesterday and today that you gave Mike a little present. What was that? Well, he rode the uh, six-cylinder Indian uh, yesterday, and he didn't come back for a long time, and we thought he broke down or else he headed back to California. Well, you told me you were leaving at 5 o'clock, and that was like about two hours. I see. Right yeah, there. yeah. But it showed up by dark. And <laughs> <laughs> anyway, and then today we went on a ride, and uh, we rode about 120 miles today, and uh, Mike was on the... Uh, Super Six, we call it. And Mike, do you give your approval on the uh, Indian Six? Oh, hell yeah. Yeah. It's way cool, bike. I mean, I was sort of, I didn't get much sleep last night because we're trying to finagle, how the hell can I get a ride on this Indian Six today? <laughs> yeah, and, I was, and Jerry was kind enough to offer. I was like, well, I didn't, I didn't, you didn't have to think no, about it no, twice. No, no. It's like, I'll, I'll even pay for the gas, Jerry. Oh, you paid for it? Yeah, yeah, twice. I paid for the air that went in the tires. <laughs> <That's good. laughs> now, Mike was uh, rode this on the uh, Omaha National Road Run. I don't know how many what years it? it's yeah, been. I don't remember. We were both a lot younger then. But, uh, it's probably been, I bet, 10, 15 years. It, uh, I'd forgotten that he rode it on, on that. Maybe 20. I don't know. And it was cool to but, ride it back then, but... You know, you're younger and you, I mean, you've learned, you know, you know more of the history and you get older and, and you appreciate stuff like this. You appreciate more. it more, oh, huh? Gosh. Yeah. Especially, you know, I take myself back to, you know, your dad's era of creating something like this and, and I'm in manufacturing, but, you know, this area here, this is all basically prototyping and a wing and a prayer and there's no digitizing it on a computer and, putting it out to a CNC machine. These guys were true craftsmen, cranking it out on on uh, pioneering and cranking it out on on uh, manual equipment. He machined the crankshaft on an antique lathe. It was an old one, and there was, he told me there was about six to 10,000 slop. But that's a, a good craftsman. That's yeah. a good craftsman. He a good machinist can- He can figure it out all. how much to take off at a time and, uh, and all that. Uh, do you want to start it up for us? And yeah, it's easy enough. Yeah, you better fire it up here so people, we can prove that it does run. Yeah, it started on the last kick. Wind it up a little bit. to take off, you know, about, doing about 3,000 RPM, you're doing about 50 mile an hour. When you get to about 3,250 RPM, I mean, this thing just all of a sudden comes into its own. I mean, it's got good torque all the way from 2,000 RPM through, but when you hit about 3,250. It's getting a second before, wind. I mean, it's just, 3,250, it's, it wants to really go. You gotta hang on tight, huh? Yeah. Yeah. But it's so smooth, you know, when you rev it, when you're sitting on it, you rev it, standing still, the thing wants to torque this way, but going down the highway, you don't feel nothing. Nothing. Else. No torque. No. 
Well, guys, Jerry, thank you. Kiwi, thanks for coming to Kansas. Oh, thank you for the this opportunity. Have a wonderful weekend. Guys, we'll see you next week. Thank you very much, Jerry. Thank you. See ya.